and the fifth lesson is on capital allowance. Now remember we said that there are some expenses that are deductible before arriving at the chargeable income. One of those expenses that are allowed to be deducted is capital allowance. Now at the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain the concept of capital allowance be able to know the reason for capital allowance under what condition capital allowance will be granted. Also be able to classify business assets for capital allowance and also the various methods for computing capital allowance. Okay. Now businesses would have to use capital assets to undertake their daily activities. Example, uh, if you are in the manufacturing sector, you may have to purchase equipment in order to engage in your activity. Now, the equipment will lose value over time. So as you use the equipment in the production, or if it's a car you use, as you use the car for your business activities, the value of the capital assets would depreciate with time. Now, under normal accounting principles, the amount of loss for every year, which we refer to as depreciation, is allowed as an expense in determining the profit of the year. But the percentage of depreciation is subjective. The business may decide to have depreciated the assets at a rate of say 10%, another business may use 20% uh, depreciation rates. So you have the asset and you may decide what rate you think the assets will depreciate by. Now, for purposes of taxation, because depreciation is subjective and businesses may have their own rate of depreciation, the depreciation that the business has allowed in their income statement will not be allowed for tax purposes. So depreciation will always be disallowed. But what the tax authorities will grant in place of depreciation is what we call capital allowance. Now the purpose of capital allowance is to mainly have a consistent application of what? Of the expense allowed for different organizations or businesses. We do not have, we do not want people to use their subjective views to determine depreciation and therefore benefit unnecessarily from their rate of depreciation. So in order to allow for consistency, we have capital allowance to be granted in place of depreciation. Now, capital allowance is granted on only depreciable assets that are wholly, exclusively, and necessarily used in the business. If the asset is not used in the generation of the income of the business, then capital allowance will not be granted. Now, the purpose is to assist the business to recoup at a much faster rate the expenditure that they may have spent or incurred in the acquiring of the assets. So you bought a vehicle for business activities. It costs you 40000 to do that. Over time, that vehicle will depreciate, will lose value. So we should be able to compensate you for the loss in value. And that is the capital allowance that will be granted to reduce your tax liability. Remember, the vehicle, the building, or the equipment is used in the generation of the income. And therefore, any loss that you may have suffered should be granted to you as what? As an allowable deduction. Now, let's look at the conditions that should exist before capital allowance is granted to a person or a business. Now, first of all, the asset must be a depreciable asset. When you say the asset must be a depreciable asset, it means that 
the asset should be one that will lose value over time. Example, if you have land, land does not lose value over time. So you cannot grant capital allowance on land. Rather, you can grant capital allowance on the building because the building may lose value over time, but the land itself does not depreciate. So the first condition is that the asset on which you want to claim capital allowance should be a depreciable asset. Vehicles, uh, equipment, these assets, computers, they lose value over time. So you can claim capital allowance on them. The second condition is that the asset must be owned by the person who is claiming the capital. And in this case, the person may be an individual or a business. Now, that asset must be owned by the person. So if it's an asset that you have leased and you are using, you cannot, you cannot claim capital allowance on it. You should have ownership of the asset in order to claim capital allowance on that. Remember, the capital allowance will benefit the business, reduce their tax liability. The next point is that the asset must be wholly, exclusively, and necessarily used for the business. So if you have a car, you purchase a car, and the car is not used for business activities, but it is used privately by the CEO, we cannot grant capital allowance on it if it's used privately. But if it's used in the generation of the income of the business, then that can qualify for capital allowance to reduce the tax liability of the business. Again, the asset must be owned and be in use at the end of the basis period. It shouldn't be asset that you have disposed at the end of the basis period. So at the end of your basis period, which is your accounting year, if it's a business, the asset should be in use and it should be owned. You should have ownership of the asset and it should be in use. It should be using the production of the income as at the end of the basis period or your accounting year. Again, the capital allowance are on an annual affair and not granted once and are not granted once for many years to follow, right? So capital allowance are granted on a yearly basis. Again, capital allowance according to the act, which is the Income Tax Act 896, they are not transferable either separately or together with the depreciable assets. So you can, when you uh, move the asset from one organization to the other, you don't transfer the capital allowance and everything there. No, they are not transferable, whether separately or together. Now, we've already defined what a depreciable asset is. We said it's an asset that will lose value with time because of wear and tear and of full sense and uh, the time factor, right? Remember that when you say depreciable asset, it does not include trading stock, where trading stock is the goods that you, you buy and sell. Those ones are not part of the depreciable assets. You are looking at capital asset, asset that will be used for more than one year, which will lose time, which will lose value because of uh, the time factor and wear and tear. So note that the depreciable assets are expected to be used for more than one basis period or one accounting year. And there should be a limit as to the useful life. It cannot be used forever. There should be a limit as to the useful life of that asset. And that asset, you've already said, should be used in the generation of the income. All right. Now, we need to classify assets because capital allowance is granted based on the pool within which the asset will fall. So for purposes of granting capital allowance, the Act has established five main classes of assets or pools for assets. Now, when an asset enters a pool, it loses its nature, meaning when you, the asset enters the pool, we put everything together and do not differentiate between asset A and asset B within the pool. So if you have that will come to the individual pools. So when we take pool one, for example, there are different assets that will come in, computer, data handling equipment. When they enter the pool, they lose the original nature. We just put them together as pool one, not specifically the, the nature of the assets. So when you talk about 
class one asset or what you call the pool one asset per the act pool one assets are made up of computer and data handling equipment so all computer and data handling equipment of the business will be classified as part of pool one and data handling equipment here are uh, printers scanners they are all data handling equipment you put them together uh, as pool one and the act allows for you to grant capital allowance up to 40 percent annually so the capital allowance that will be granted for pool one is 40 percent annually now let's move to pool two okay so even for the pool one you also realize that the capital allowance is granted on a reducing balance method meaning for the subsequent years for the very first year the capital allowance will be based on the the cost base because that's the first year but in the subsequent years the capital allowance will be based on the written down value or the reduced value at the beginning of the year so it's based on reducing balance method now class two is also made up of all automobile buses uh, vehicles construction and earth moving equipment when the business have any of these assets plant and machinery used in manufacturing we classify all of them under pool two and then the act says that we should grant capital allowance of 30 percent remember the pool one was 40 percent capital allowance pool two is 30 percent on reducing balance method and when you go to pool three also the nature of assets that come under pool three are uh, railroad cars locomotive engines and also what equipment you also have office furniture fittings uh fixtures uh specialized public utility plants equipment and machinery so assets these assets will fall under pool three if you have any office equipment fixtures and equip uh furniture they all come under pool three and the capital allowance that will be granted annually is 20 percent remember Pool one is 40 percent on reducing balance method pool two is 30 percent on reducing balance method now pool three or class three you also get 20 percent on reducing balance method now let's go to pool four the fourth pool is for assets such as buildings structures works of a permanent nature they all will fall under pool four and under pool four note that the individual assets do not lose their nature as we have in pool one to pool three you have to report for each one separately but they will all enjoy 10 percent depreciation on a straight line method 10 percent capital allowance on a straight line method unlike the first three that is on reducing balance method Pool four is on a straight line method, and you would have ten percent depreciation. But you have to consider the number of days in the basis period for the very first year. That is for pool four. So if the basis period within the year is less than three sixty-five, then not all the ten percent will be granted. It will be granted based on the number of days within the basis period that the business has operated pool five now pool five is made up of intangible fixed assets intangible fixed assets such as copyright patent right trademark they are intangible fixed assets and they are depreciated or they are give capital allowance is granted based on a straight line principle so we look at the number of years of the assets and then you grant capital allowance over the lifespan of the asset. So if the asset is for 20 years, you spread the asset value over the number of years. But note that in the first year, you are likely to have the basis period less, the number of days in the basis period less than 365. And therefore you have to prorate it based on the number of days in the basis period. Now let's look at this illustration. We have man limited began business of food use canning on 1st January 2016 and decided to prepare its account to 31st October 
to the year end or the accounting year end 31st October each year. The following were among depreciable assets acquired for the business. Now we have factory building, which is 240,000, raw material stores, which is 160,000, trademark, which is 135,000. You are required to determine factor allowance for all relevant years. Now let's look at this. Now for the 2016 year of assessment, remember the business started operations 1st January 2016, but the accounting year ends 31st October. Now for the 2016 year of assessment, how many assets were acquired? We have what? We have three buildings, we have raw material stores, we have trademark. The trademark is to last for 15 years. So for the 2016 year of assessment, remember it will end 31st October. So we have what? We have factory, remember for pool four, the assets are accounted for separately. So they lose, they do not lose their nature when they enter the pool. So for factory, you realize that the cost was 240, but in the first year, the capital allowance granted was what? 989. Now remember that for pool four, we, we said that for pool four, capital allowance is granted 10% annually. So why is it that for the first year, capital allowance was not 10%, which is 24,000? It is that because in the first year, the number of days in the previous period was less than 365. Remember, they started 1st January and the accounting year ends 31st October. It means that for the 2016 year of assessment, the number of days in the basis period will be less than one year. So it will be from 1st January to 31st October. So you calculate the number of days that the business operated within the basis period for the very first year. But in the subsequent year, remember the 2017 year, you can see that because 2017, you definitely operate for the full year going forward. You have the 24,000 as your capital allowance. When you go to 2018, you also have 24,000. The only difference is that for 2017, for 2016, because they started 1st January and they are ending the year uh, 31st October, they would have operated for just 10 months. And you calculate the number of days you have 300 and you have 306 days in there so let me yeah 304 days so the basis period january to 31st january 2016 to the 16 2016 to 1st October 2016 is obviously less than one year. That's for the very first year. So when you add up the number of days in there, you get 304 days. So the 10% of the 240,000, which is for factory, we have to prorate it by the number of days within the basis period that we worked. Remember, the business was in existence for only 304 for the 2015 year of assessment. So 304 of the 365. So that is the very first year for factory. Same for stores. Realize that for stores too, stores will also fall under pool four. So 10%, but note that because of the number of days, we have to prorate it for the very first year. So it's 10%, but we work for 304 days in that basis period. And also trademark will fall under pool five remember pool five we use the useful life and we are told that trademark is supposed to last for 15 years we are supposed to spread this for 15 years divided by 15 every year you charge one three five thousand over 15 but because the very first year the number of days was less than 365 you have to prorate it based on the 304 but for the subsequent years you have the full year for your capital allowance to be granted 
So you realize that in the subsequent year, stores had 16,000, which is 10%. But in the first year, it had 13,000 because of the number of days in the year, which was less than the 365, because they started 1st January. Now, same for your trademark. First year was what? Was 7496 because of the 304 over 365. But subsequent years, you have 9,000, 9,000, which is the 135 over 15 years, 9,000, 9,000. Stores, the 10%, street line method, 16,000, 16,000 for the subsequent years. Factory, 24, 24 for the subsequent years. But the very first year, because of the number of days being less than 365, we had a different capital allowance granted. Remember, pool four and five have what? A straight line method of depreciation. So that's why we have the 24-24. Okay, now let's look at, in summary, the class of asset. We said that class one or pool one computers and IT equipment or data handling equipment is 40% on reducing balance method. Pool two, manufacturing heavy equipment, earth moving equipment, 30% reducing balance method. Pool three, it's also for what? For aircraft vessels, 20% reducing balance. Pool four, building structures, 10% street line, and then intangible, the, uh, your copyright, your patent right. It's over the useful life, and it's a street line. Again, capital allowance may be granted for businesses that are into the petroleum and mining operations. Now, if a person in case any capital allowance expenditure, Relating to petroleum and mining, uh, the capital allowance that will be granted is 20% on a straight line method. Now, if there are any monies or considerations received upon the disposal or sale of any of the assets, it will be included in the accessible income of the business. Again, when you transfer parts of the assigned uh, portions or your rights to another person, then the commissioner general will apportion the written down value in proportion to the interest that you have retained and the percentage of interest that you have assigned. So you cannot assign portion of your right and expect to get full capital allowance. It will be based on the interest that you have going forward. Okay, so again, in the first year, that will also be based on the number of days within the basis period that you work. Because you not grant you a full year capital allowance if the number of days in the basis period is less than 365. So same example, if uh, Mr. Patapa commences business 13th of September 2018, and he bought computer 2000 for use in his business on 11th. Remember that the date that you purchase the asset is not important, but it's the number of days in the basis period that is important. Okay. So the issue now is compute the capital allowance for 2018 year of assessment. Fine, now when did he start business? 13th of uh, September. What did he buy? He bought computers. Computers fall under what? Pool one. Pool one, what is the rate of uh, capital allowance? It is 40%. So what will happen is that you go down and then for the year 2010, we are supposed to determine for the year 20, uh, for the year 2018, so 2018, for the year 2018, let me change this to 2010 so that we have consistency. Uh, if 2010, so for the year 2010, the capital allowance. The capital allowance, remember they started 13th of September 2010. So the basis period will end. Remember, they do not have a different accounting year. If they had a different accounting year, that would apply. But Mr. Patapa, business is in line with the calendar year. So it's from 13th September to 31st December 2010. And that would mean that he was in business for how many days? For less than the 365 so compute the number of days from 13 september to the end of the year and that is around 110 days 
So yes, pool one gives you 40%, but you will not be granted all the 40%. Rather look at the number of days over 365. So times the number of days over 365. And that will give us capital allowance to be granted in 2010 as 241. As if he had started business on 1st of January, then the full capital allowance would have been granted, go with 365 over 365. So it would have been straight away 2000 by the 40%. But because the business started way uh, somewhere around September, which is very close to the end of the calendar year, we have to look at the number of days within the basis period within, for which the business was in operation. And that will be the basis for granting the capital allowance for the year 2010. But for the subsequent years, we'll have a full year because obviously we'll be operating for the full year for the subsequent years. So in summary, what we are saying is that capital allowance is given in place of depreciation and it is to allow businesses to be able to generate enough to what uh, to cover the cost of what the digital asset that they use in the generation of the profits or the income now the rationale is to have a uniform way of granting this allowance and not the subjective way depreciation is being done by firms now the conditions we have clearly explained that you should own the asset the asset should be depreciable the asset should be used as at the end of the basis period for you to enjoy from capital allowance we've also looked at the different classification the five classifications of capital allowance and the capital allowance rates applicable for each of the classes and also we've done some computations on capital allowance we have some questions for you that you may try and see how best you've understood the lesson I wish you all the best. I'll see you for the next lesson.